Hi everyone, uh, my name is David Pardon. I'm the Technical Technology Implementation Lead for Diatech and today I'm going to be talking about BIM collaboration and more importantly about the challenges and the journey that we've experienced with our clients um, in relation to um, them working in a more collaborative and a better collaborative way. So as part of that I'm just going to uh, load up my screen here and share my presentation. So today is really looking at a challenge. Now, I'm very conscious of the fact that this is not going to be a product demo because I think what I want to really focus on today is um, really the psychology and more the challenge in front of people about doing better collaboration. So first thing I probably um, stress is um, really the why um, or the scope of it, should I say, sorry. So who am I really talking to? So I'm really looking to talk to people who understand BIM. Um, who are responsible for BIM adoption or responsible for the project administration of BIM projects. Um, team members and collaborators who are looking to bring in other aspects of the collaboration process, whether it be behavioural or data analytical, to better understand how their people use technology to collaborate and hopefully collaborate better. And really look at the value proposition about what BIM collaboration technology really relates to and what you should be looking for and how you should be measuring it. But like I said, the key thing for me in this is the why. Well, the why is really about necessity and change being precipitated by necessity. We've gone for a period of six months where it's been a massive challenge across multiple industries, not just in design and construction and uh, due to the coronavirus outbreak. Um, so examples is we've seen a massive decrease in activity across um, commercial sides of industry, where it be financial, real estate, construction, agriculture, uh, forestry. But the reality of it is that the, the way, the reasoning and the rationale for better BIM collaboration has been more apparent and more required now than it's ever been, because we've now entered a new norm where we can have people congregated in large groups um, at any given time. So once we understand the why, I thought it was important to think about how we've been working with clients over the last six months and beyond and about some of the things that we've discussed with them, some of the challenges they've been experienced and some of the, the insight and knowledge we've gained from that. And hopefully for people who um, watch this presentation and watch this talk, it will give them food for thought to go back and look at their own situation and really kind of think about how they could be doing things better in a more collaborative and more uh, conducive way. So what I'm really looking at is how we, we scale BIM collaboration from one to all projects, irrespective of frameworks or contracts. I think that's key. I think the key thing to collaboration or good collaboration is looking for a consistent methodology that doesn't require specifics of project or approach. Really looking at how the insight of how user behavior works to make sure that your collaboration is working the way you expect it to be, or you're collaborating in the right ways. Um, two big key things of that, however, is measuring the return on collaboration and how you're collaborating. Because I think one thing I think notice very readily with a lot of customers, a lot of people I've talked to is, it's all good to say that you are been complying and you're collaborating correctly and you're following the frameworks and everything else, but are you measuring it? And what are you measuring? And how are you feeding that information back to a wider community within your team, within your company? So the way we've looked at our clients is we look at taking a, an ideal scenario as best as we can. And we look at a pilot project. Now, historically, We'd have done this through BIM360 um, Classic, as it's called now, which would be BIM360 Team and Collaboration for Revit. And there are challenges with that because the project data was normally housed in different silos and different people were not always working in the same tools. So, you know, the client might not be working in Revit, for example. Uh, project team may just want to look at deliverables coming out the back end of it, whereas the wider design team are the ones generating the information. So sort of the disparity and disconnect that required a little bit of ingenuity to make things kind of talk and sing. And kind of some of the big areas of that was that, you know, users had different interfaces and different sources of truth. So a project team would be looking at SharePoint, which is a mirrored image of the team environment. 
but you know there was frequencies where that thing had to be updated and there had to be a cross pollination of information between the two and um, coordination required really experienced team members and strong discipline in terms of meeting the requirement adherence to schedules and capabilities had to be met at all times and um, user management was a pain and really the, the isit teams had concerns about managing all of these user accounts, you know, when people leave, onboarding people, things of that nature. And that was creating a high volume of support calls, not only for the internal IT teams, but also for ourselves as suppliers of the, of the software. Then we got to stage two, about two or three years ago, and we really kind of got to a point where we started to really tackle the two main challenges, which was having a single source of truth, which is a pillar of proper BIM uh, project delivery and integrated project delivery. And then having a, suite, a series of tools that were integrated that were relevant to the roles and the needs of the people. So when Autodesk, for example, brought out NextGen, um, and again, I, I'll probably have a heavy influence on Autodesk because that's the main suppliers of, of tools that we provide. Um, the key element was bringing all that information to one repository as a foundational level. Um, the second thing was layering tools on top of it, where they were specific for the roles and the needs and requirements of users, which was a huge departure uh, for many clients uh, who were used to previous um, methodology. The biggest thing going forward over the last six, 12 months, however, has been creating a consistency. So what we found is if we can create a pilot project, that's fine and you can deliver success and capability and implementation. Problem is replicating it. And the problem is replicating that across multiple projects and multiple needs and requirements and methodologies. So the other approach we looked at was applying the same methodology across multiple projects, dividing and devising a collaboration methodology that was consistent across uh, project A to project F, for example. This gave us an initial focus group so we were able to then focus down on the needs and requirements of the individual projects, put them into containers of what was communal in terms of approach, requirement, objectives, risk, everything else like that, and look at the things that were unique. And a lot of unique things were really relating to either the sectors that were involved, the teams that were involved, or the technology that was used to generate information. So the key element that from a client perspective and a client we're talking about a design team or a construction lead in many of this is that we had to set up a focus group because the success, the success of technology implementation is not so much about having 8 million tools within the product. It's about aligning those tools and those workflows and capabilities to the desired collaboration methodology and project delivery methodology as much as possible. And then deciding where things need to change. Does the process need to change? Does the method need to change? Or ultimately, does the technology need to change? So we looked at up to six projects. We looked at really focusing on kind of main areas of business sectors. And we looked at deploying a standard package across those six projects. So what we looked at doing was to try and figure out and capture some understanding of how the technology and the collaboration approach would be implemented across those projects and really look for consistency across all the projects. Look for things that propped up quite a fair bit across all of them. So we take each of the teams separately aside and we'd listen to their project delivery approach, listen to the week to week, month to month approach in terms of the challenges their issues their setbacks, their, their the big wins, the small, small, uh, small wins that they had, things that they implemented that worked really well, things that were partially implemented that need to be refined. And then we built a questionnaire. And out of that questionnaire, we then apply that to all the team members. 10 questions, very, very straightforward. But the idea is we need to define, figure out whether or not the project delivery team was a true reflection of what was happening on the ground. Because that was really going to help us bridge the gap in terms of having better collaboration is that we can fit the needs of the objectives on the top level by facilitating the lower levels with a better chance of making sure we could meet all the requirements for better collaboration on the BIM project. The other part of it was buy-in. So the next part is collating the responses and sending it back to key stakeholders because we need to get buy-in from the top level, from the client and from the wider project delivery team members who are responsible ultimately for the project delivery. Once we had that, 
we were able to then start collating the feedback and look at specific things that were common across these things. This is kind of going back about 12 months. So we're looking at things like collaborating using Revit and Move360 is easy once the project is self-correct. So the key element in that really is that, you know, there are multiple ways that you can collaborate from a design team point of view. You know, you have work shared collaboration using Revit. You have ISC, push and pull collaboration. Understanding that upfront meant we could help the clients set up the project repository correctly, set up the proper appropriate workflows and help them really make sure that they had a very streamlined process to exchange information uh, back and forward across multiple teams and multiple members. Big thing over the last six, 12 months has been remote working. So obviously for the last six months, that's been huge, but it's really been came to the forefront in the last six months for obvious reasons. But by having a cloud-based platform that you can synchronize and you can cache locally and you can work from anywhere if you have an internet connection or you know if you're working on mobile device, you know, synchronize and work offline has really been a huge benefit for a lot of people. It's freed up uh, a lot of capability and understanding of how they approach project collaboration. The other side of it as well as the wider team members can now interact with that live data. So, you know, people can look at documentation, they can look at models without the need to have uh, um, a vast array of desktop tools to do that. So these were all things that were coming back from a collaboration methodology in terms of our feedback and understanding, tracking change, who implemented the change. Uh, since we have one rep rep uh, repository in BIM 360 Docs, we have only one place to look now. Issue tracking on our data files helps to sign responsibility and clarity on what needs to be done. So we've got consistency across our data structure. Who can what, when and where. And even a sort of simple thing like to share a piece of information as simple as placing it in a location or sharing out a link. So we've seen this kind of pool of constant feedback and we pulled out kind of the cream at the top to start from and say, right, okay, now we've got something to start to look at how do we then approach this? So I'll pick one for example is, you know, the Revit collaboration. So we went in and looked at these users who are using Revit and who are using the Bin360 design collaboration. And we asked them certain questions about how they were collaborating with each other, how frequently they were doing it, what was it fixing, what was it creating in terms of opportunity to collaborate more, to collaborate better. And by pulling that information and looking at them across projects, but ultimately more and more importantly, looking at how they would approach it traditionally without using that technology to collaborate we were able to build a model that we can then sell back to the wider team. So depending on the needs and requirements of the users, time savings could be from zero, because they're relatively small interaction, up to five hours a week per user. The, old, the biggest thing for them was, it was a standard methodology to collaboration. Because it, it became a de facto way they were working on projects, when they were working on multiple projects and jumping between projects, it was the same consistent methodology. So I'm just entering. The biggest issue in collaboration was linked files and non work shared collaborators. So people who weren't implementing it who were involved in the wider team, <coughs> pardon me, um, required a slight change to the approach. So that was factored in early and it was accepted and it was brought into the standard methodology and approach. So it wasn't something that was just coming up and creating bumps in the road. There was an expectation of understanding that to collaborate effectively with those people a certain protocol and process had to be included within this methodology. The biggest thing was it allowed them to do proper remote working outside the main office and it to actually be feasible for the first time. So for me, and especially for people I talk to, it really kind of allowed a better work-life balance, you know, in terms of travel, in terms of commuting, in terms of feasibility to work on things from a consistent nine to five scenario doesn't always work. At least now people had the ability to work around schedules, around other aspects of their lives. And it was also increasing their um, capabilities and ability to work. So at the end of that process, we looked at, once we kind of defined the baselines in terms of collaboration, and once we looked at the specifics in terms of trend about what were th people feeding back as what was working, what was not, so we could focus correctly on the right areas, they really kind of broke down to four main areas. Um, people want to understand what people were using in terms of technology. 
in terms of building the value proposition. They want to know where people have been active or people have been inactive. You know, lots of times with clients we would see, oh, we need X amount of licenses for a particular product or a particular platform. Um, and we would ask the questions, well, can you give me specifics about who and why and how they're using it and what their necessity and need is? And you'd say, oh, well, they just asked for it because it's part of the project team. But then you go back three months, six months, half the people hadn't logged in. And that's an issue. But they weren't tracking it at the time because it hadn't been uh, uh, agreed as being a trackable metric they want to look at. Issues was a big thing. Making sure they were tracking issues tracking the correspondence for issues, and really looking at the whole kind of audit trail around activity on files and the progression and the maturity. So for successful collaboration for, you know, these pilot projects we worked on, these kind of been the main four areas that came out in terms of the focus group. So what we then, then start looking at the value proposition. So we said, okay, when BIM collaboration works, good and works well, where is the most value created? So for non-Revit users viewing models and interacting with the collaboration process is where collaboration really worked. Design teams can work effectively in collaboration within their native environment of Revit, for example, or any design tool. It's when the non-designers are able to view that information in real time or as near real time as possible or at stages of development and actually put in their experience and their input, that's where the BIM collaboration process really worked. The key element in collaboration for them is how information was up to date more frequently and more regularly. There was less drops in time where you were waiting for people to send information back and forward. Issue tracking broken down by category and widely used in a document model progression was huge to make sure that there was an obligation understanding of who was responsible and who was ob obligated to make the change and whether the change was being made correctly and effectively in the right time. And having an ability to track that over time was, was a massive benefit to help the whole process of each individual and the wider team having understanding of where they fitted into the whole, whole collaboration process. Again, just to reiterate, the whole area around remote teleworking was huge because it really meant that from a business continuity and a project continuity standpoint, predominantly in pre-construction, if you've been honest about it, the ability to work collaboratively through design collaboration, through BIM 360 and tools of that nature, meant that people could work around the challenges they had around their existing environment and their existing lifestyles. You know, for my own example, for example, I had the wife and two kids at home at the same time, and we're all under each other's feet, but I could always sneak away somewhere and I could work remotely, dial into the system, work with clients, help them work on the project deliverables, help them sell up users, all from the comfort of my home. All I needed was my laptop and an internet connection and access to the software. So that's allowed a more functional and a more agile capability for people to work remotely. The key thing for me with the lockdown in terms of BIM collaboration was that the technology capabilities allowed clients who were adopting the technology to keep project delivery and business continuity going to a certain degree. Obviously from a site standpoint where people were had boots on grounds, there was an issue there, but for projects where design was still ongoing um, and having the capability of people having a PC and access to the software meant by applying proper big collaboration technology, they were able to continue that workflow in some capacity rather than just dropping tools completely. Um, and we've seen probably over the last six months, a lot of them have progressed in terms of design and has had a major impact on what they were doing going forward. A lot of clients I speak to are very reticent about bringing their staff back to HQ because they found a better way of working. Another aspect of it in terms of BIM collaboration when we looked at value was that people were able to spend their main focus on design and documentation. And rather than figuring out how to send information from one platform to another, by standardizing on a methodology and a collaborative approach, they didn't have to keep jumping through hoops to get information from point A to point B. The key element in all of that was assigning the technology, developing the, the methodology, and initiating the workflow. Once that had been agreed, based on the value proposition, based on the things that we captured, it was a consistent methodology. And because it was consistent, it freed up time, it freed up focus for people just to work on what they should be working on 
was the design and documentation. But better collaboration offers a couple of other things. It gives you more opportunities. You know, all revenue users want to use design collaboration. That's really the kind of main feedback I've been getting over the last six months. You know, it's it does what it necessarily need to do without having to be in the same room. You know, they can collaborate on multiple models. They can collaborate on multiple projects, all from the comfort of their own remote working environment, where it be a cafe, where it be a home, where it be a you know visit a family member with internet access. Away you go, you're back up and running. For non revit users and non design tool users in general, um, what they're really looking for are simple tools to get access to the data and actually become more uh, a part of the collaborative process, especially in the early stages of development. You know, really feel like they're part of the process and not just wait for a point in time where someone will send them information. But the other thing is really about consistency. Once you have a consistent methodology across your projects, you've now got a baseline to reassess and redefine your best approach. Because you have that methodology knocked down and it's your standard methodology, you now have ability to now measure it, to now capture it, and now analyze it and see what works and what doesn't work. Collaboration and striving for better collaboration always comes from reassessing and reaffirming your understanding of what works and what doesn't work. And the simple truth of it is if you're not doing it consistently and you're not capturing it, then you clearly can't measure it. So how do we look at the widening of the approach of this? So what are the lessons I've learned and the conversations I've had with other clients? It really kind of breaks down to three areas. Um, as much as possible, standardize on platforms. And I use platforms plural, plural for a reason. Um, up until this point, I've really been talking about a single platform. But the reality is that there are methodologies and approaches now where you can make platforms sing and dance and talk to each other and act like a consistent standard platform. You know, whether it's SharePoint, where it's BIM360, where it's Connected Cloud, where it's one of the other cloud providers, uh, there are usually uh, application and uh, programming interfaces which allow you to make these top platforms talk. So information can be put in the environments that's more accessible and, and, and more, uh, more susceptible for users to actually interact with. So you can create what's called a connected platform, a common data platform of connected tool sets. The second thing that really came out is user development. So over the preceding six months, we've seen a focus on clients trying to collaborate better in-house. And then secondly, with external partners on project development. The third element that came into it was user development. As information and as project activity started to slow down, the next emphasis was on to, well, how do we keep our users engaged so they're not looking elsewhere? So it was really about developing out the tools, the knowledge of the tools, the capabilities of the tools, and building out power users. And once we had those power users, we could then rely on them heavily to start feeding information to us, which led into the third part, which is a collaborative approach of using business intelligence tools to build data models of information, metrics, and capture. So when we look at that side of it, for example, we started building out, for example, Power BI dashboards where we could measure performance. So we could look at activities across a project based on location. We could look at activities in terms of checklists and tasks, for example, and we can structure that information down. So when I click a particular month, it would give me all the activity on that in that a particular location in terms of the model, in terms of the site, whatever way I want to do it, if I could capture it, I can measure it. And then I can filter that down to things like tasks, milestones, inspections, if it's site-based activity. I can look at tasks from a design standpoint and see what had been completed, what hadn't been completed. And as a design manager, as a, as a project manager, and as a BIM lead, rather than having to go and chase up multiple areas or multiple sources, if everybody's filtering into the same pot and updating that pot at a very high frequency, I just need to go here. And then I can find the root causes of where I'm seeing uh, a bottleneck or things like that nature. So I know where to go, but equally and most importantly, I have the information to back it up and say, look, this didn't happen and the sequence of events have now changed because this didn't happen at this point in time. If you rectify it here and it's here and it's in by then, we can have you back on track. Without the analytical data, I can't make that assessment. 
And without having proper collaboration methodology where everybody's collaborating into the same pot of data, I can't make that assessment. Either. And the same goes for things like activity. So I can look at things like management across you know, multiple projects. I can look at things where things have been changed, things that haven't been changed. I can look at checklisting, I can look at quality, I can look at safety, I can look at snagging. All of this relates back to data analytics. If I'm capturing it, if I'm holding it in a data repository, I can sanitize it, I can clean it up, and I can present it, and I can measure it. And for a lot of clients in terms of their collaboration approach, the fundamental element before they even start looking at collaboration is they need to look at what they want to be able to measure, what they want to be able to achieve, and communally, or communally, sorry, what do they want to basically define success as? Not as individuals, not as companies, but collectively, what will project success look like? Once those building blocks are in place, we can then start to build a collaborative model around it. So it's more about, you know, understanding the challenges and knowing how to address them. The key thing is that in terms of BIM collaboration, the goal needs to be communal and the measuring of success has to be collaborative across the entire project. It's not singular, it's plural. You know, what are the goals and how do we collectively achieve those goals? What do we need to collaborate on? How often, how frequently, and why are we going to do it? And what platform are we going to do it on? By trying to adopt better BIM collaboration with clients, it does expose a significant need to improve behavior. And by, by behavior, we mean people meeting the obligations once the obligations have been defined in terms of frequency, time, content, deliverable. And once that had been agreed, <coughs> pardon me, we were able better to actually generate a better value proposition. What it also does is it also exposes the need to improve process and information quality. And this is really the key to get the wider non-Revit, non-design tool users to use the data. If the data is sufficient for non-design users to make assessments and judgments on, then it means that they're more likely to get more involved in the process earlier. They're not waiting for extracts or specific reports. If you give them the information and they're able to do it themselves, they're more likely to get more involved in the collaborative process. So it really meant that we had to go back to some clients and really go back and assess how they were doing things and what they were actually incorporating into their design information from an informational standpoint, from an extract, from an output standpoint. And really the key thing in all of us is setting out ahead of time the shared benefits and goals ahead of the project. It really helped understand what the shared benefit of collaborating better and more was. Once that had been defined in a, in a communal form, that if we do this, these are the collective benefits that we'll get. These are the collective better processes that we'll get. These are the, the, the better collective thinking we'll be able to approach uh, design challenges and construction problems with. Once that approach had been taken, it meant that really the buy-in was a lot easier to approve across the entire project team. So rather than dealing with individuals on a separate basis, we looked at kind of going to source and getting key personnel from all the teams involved in delivery process and say, right, you need to think about the communal approach to really understand the benefit of collaborating better and collaborating earlier. So for me, really what I want to kind of brought this talk to kind of bring it to a close is that I want to just kind of, I wanted to just talk about the approaches that we've had to take with clients to really kind of fully understand what they're trying to achieve and really look at what technology needs to be implemented to help them achieve that. You know, there are things that we could prescribe out of the box and say it does this and it may do that. But the problem is that you as a client or anybody who, who may watch this probably wants to get it to do more, probably has more needs and more requirements. And without the proper dialogue happening internally and happening with ourselves, it's really hard to advocate what's the best approach. We as a company don't advise implement technology that doesn't meet your requirements. The key is making sure we understand the requirements, not just for you, but for your projects and for everything else that goes on. So I put my details up on the screen there 
Um, if anybody wants to reach out and have a conversation privately, feel free to talk to me on any of the channels that are on the screen. Uh, if there are specific technology requirements or anything you want to understand around implementation and how to do the collaboration better outside of just design, but even just business collaboration, again, feel free to reach out for me again as well. So I hope everybody who joined finds it informative and really the kind of main benefit or the main focus I had on this conversation or uh, presentation today was to make people think a little bit more about the collaborative approach and uh, maybe ask some questions internally to find the right solutions, the right answers that you need. So thanks everyone for your time and uh, hopefully I'll talk to you all again soon.